On the 8th of May 2017, loving husband, father and grandfather Lou Richards passed away at his Melbourne nursing home. He was 94 years of age. He just loved us all to bits, spoiled us rotten. Family to him was his number one priority. No matter what, we were always came first with Lou. He was just a great family man. Most of us knew Lou as the AFL and media icon. Lou captained Collingwood to the drought-breaking 1953 Premiership and went on to many years of entertaining us all on TV, radio and in print, sharing his love for our great game with his upbeat commentary and hosting skills. Lou was honoured with a state funeral on the 16th of May 2017. He will be sadly missed and always fondly remembered. Lou's great-grandson Jack was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at the age of five, his first day of prep, also marked by a trip to the hospital. And like so many sufferers, found a void in the ability to access services and resources. That was until his parents, Lucy and Craig, discovered the Type 1 Foundation. It's a great community-based foundation. Um, it's run by families who are living with Type 1 themselves, so they understand the day-to-day -day struggle that we go through. And because of that, they're actually able to support us with what we need. It's just a great community-based foundation where you can go to to get help if you need it. Just shy of two years after establishing the Type 1 Foundation, Angela Liston McCauley was delighted to learn that Lou's family had generously decided to ask mourners to donate to the Type 1 Foundation rather than donate flowers. I was absolutely overwhelmed. The response was mind-blowing. It's just amazing how supportive people in this country can be. What followed was an almost overwhelming show of support from the wider community. Lose. Channel 9's The Footy Show started the ball rolling with a handball competition, something that many of us would have remembered Lou hosting many years before, raising $10,000. The foundation was also given permission to fundraise at Lou's funeral. And the following weekend's Collingwood Hawthorne game at the Mighty G was dedicated to fundraising for the foundation. This support means we're going to be able to help so many more families living with type 1 every day. There are so many out there doing it tough. This means we'll be able to relieve some of their daily pressures. Lou's family's generous support has triggered large-scale awareness of the foundation and the issues related to type 1 diabetes. But by no means has this put an end to the journey. To the contrary, the journey has just begun for the Type 1 Foundation and there is still so much more to be achieved. There is so much more we need to achieve. How we do that is through a grassroots campaign aiming at the child's school day. The reason? Because blood glucose levels, if they fluctuate either high or low, will produce problems with learning, with memory and with concentration. And children deserve to have an equal opportunity to learn. Now teachers in this regard have often been fantastic at trying to help the children, but they need more support. So for us to achieve that, we're developing a two-pronged attack. The first, a development of modules that are going to be freely and readily available that will be developed to international standards. The second are school visits by healthcare professionals to connect and support those school staff. This will enable them to give safe and legal delivery of insulin at school and will also allow the children to have equal opportunity to participate in all aspects of school life. So we urge you to help us provide these children with an equal opportunity to learn. We are always looking for support and you can help us by donating your time or money, but we always need volunteers. The generosity shown by so many to date highlights the worthiness of the cause. But the battle has only just begun and the road is long. We thank you for your support to date and ask that you stick with us as we fight to support families until we find a cure for type 1 diabetes.